Your directorial debut here. Of all of your past writing and producing experience, which particular production did you think set you up for the most success as a Helmer on your first film? You know, I don't think it was one particular project, but I will say it's probably my 17 years as a TV writer producer, having to be on set and you know deal with the pre-production, production, post-production that most set me up for this. And in addition to that, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't the mentorship and allyship of my fellow director friends like John Chu, who directed Crazy Rich Asians. Um, I had to put myself through at-home director school for this movie during the pandemic. And he would just get on the Zooms with me and you know coach me through things. What is the best piece of advice you got from him or somebody else about what it takes to direct a feature film? First of all, having complete confidence in your vision and in your, um, in your sense of story. But the uh, the most important practical piece of advice was to be in the moment. That as a writer, you know, you you exist in like um, the past and like what the movie was, what you're doing now, what you're going to be doing tomorrow. As the director, you want to just be in the moment, be with your actors. You know, are we laughing and crying the way we need to in this scene so that our audience can feel it? And that was tremendously helpful. So now for another uh, future first time feature director out there, what advice would you get, give them? How would you pay it forward? I pay it forward and that, you know, I'm just going to crib off John Chu, which is uh, with the path to success, um, which is that to have faith in your vision. And the moment you start trying to make everybody happy or you try to operate from a place of fear, you are just, you're not doing a service to yourself. Just go with it. You know, in success or failure, at least you are telling your story. Oh, I have so many follow-up questions to that. First, because I love hearing about studios and producers who support their director's voice. And I know mm -hmm. you had that here with, with Lionsgate and uh, yes. great point. What is something about the studio director relationship that they struck with you that you really appreciated and hope that more directors working with studios on comedies like this can have in the future? Uh, there are not a lot of female directors in the future in the future world and definitely not a lot of female directors of color. So when Point Grey suggested that perhaps, you know, I could put myself in that role, uh, first of all, it was that allyship that made me believe that it was even possible. But when I met with Lionsgate, they could not have been more more supportive and bigger allies to myself personally and to our project. We have a crazy, first of its kind, R-rated, nasty comedy with four Asian American faces at its center. And at some point we thought, surely, surely a grown up was gonna come in and say like, you know, um, listen, Missy, like we don't know what you're trying to do, but you gotta like rein it back. And that never happened. To their credit, they said we, they understood what we were going for and encouraged us to lean even harder harder in that direction. I love that I, uh, I reversed Point Grey. Who's <laughs> president Spoonerism? Do you know what a Spoonerism is? <laughs> yes, I do it. I do it all the time. Do it all, all the time. time. I switch sentences, like, you know, the structure of sentences. I do it deliberately for fun, and then I'll do it accidentally because I've been doing it for fun. I'm a professional writer. You think I would know. And so, Neri Pemeroff. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I'll call myself that all day long. Um, speaking about, you know, believing in your own voice and sticking to it, how do you apply that mentality to, you know, things like test screenings and getting notes and suggestions from others? How do you kind of draw the line between, you know, knowing when to listen to someone else versus knowing when to, you know, trust your gut, say thank you for the suggestion, but no, I got to go with what I believe in. I come from working in television, which is a very collaborative medium. And I think the best writers and creators are, um, are people who understand that to be surrounded with a room full of smarter people is exactly the position you want to be in. And being able to listen to all those notes, finding a way to have those notes plus your project and not diminish. But ultimately, you are the filter for that. You're the one, you're the you're that uh, inflection point for your own movie. So being able to take in all of that input, see what helps you and what doesn't, and sometimes open you up to a different perspective and seeing what's funny and what's not, what's heartbreaking, what's not. Can you give me an example of both a time where someone made a suggestion that opened you up to something new, but then also mm -hmm. a time where you had to listen to your own instincts and know that regardless of suggestions, you were going that route? Absolutely. Um, I think there's one joke in the movie uh, about Splinter, uh, where um, uh, the character of Audrey says, you know, it's like when I masturbate, I think about Splinter. I remember seeing that going like, 
this is ridiculous. I don't know what we're even doing here. Um, I felt like, you know, it was too much. It was crazy. But, you know, they, uh, uh, Josh Fagan at Point Grey fought hard for it. And we, and the great thing about test audience is like, you can test these theories. You can test the jokes. You can test the heartfelt moments. And that joke worked. And, it, you know, once something works, you can't argue with it. I'm literally going straight from here to talk about Ninja Turtles. Ah. Makes all the sense in the yep. world to me. <laughs> Yeah. So how about uh, the opposite now? A time where like you felt very strongly about mm -hmm. something and you were going to stick to it no matter what. Yeah. Well, you know, the story has like this stealth um, through line of heart um, that there's a point in the story that we're all feeling for the character and even crying. And this is right off of, you know, laughing at some insanely inappropriate moments. Um, I am working with comedy writers and producers, but I come from a drama background and especially in a movie like this where it can be so crazy you want it rooted in something real something authentic and so I think for all the stories where um, the characters really resonated with our heart and fighting and making sure that um, it doesn't feel like we're taking away from the comedy I think we are just helping support uh, the, the funny storytelling that we're doing by making sure these characters feel real that we're crying for them the balance you strike in that respect here is exceptional so I imagine you go into this shoot with a plan, but as happens with making any film, mm -hmm. things don't always go according to plan. So can mm -hmm. you give me an example of a day on set when things weren't going to plan and you had to find a creative way to pivot and maybe you found some unexpected magic? You know, that's a great question. Some of my favorite uh, moments in the movie are things that were not originally scripted for that point. We had originally some insane big set piece where our characters were crossing a river on a water buffalo. And a um, fun fact, uh, you know, not the easiest thing to pull off. Uh, water buffalo in Canada maybe don't want to get into the water. Maybe, maybe there are fleas. Maybe it's uh, not a good idea to put your brilliant, talented cast into a river in the fall in Canada. Uh, so we scrapped that. Thank the. Thank goodness. Um, and instead, we had we always had the K-pop element. But at that point, we decided to make that element a bigger set piece than it was. And I am so excited that we did. That really is one of the high points of the movie. No disrespect to Water Buffalo, but <laughs> the K-pop stuff deserved all the time in the spotlight it mm -hmm. got. I will say congratulations on Joyride, but I will also say Roy Jide. I think everybody out there should see it. Thank you so much for your time today. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you.